Welcome back. This is a video to walk you through how to register for classes in dualenroll.com. If you've just completed the dual credit application in Dual Enroll, you'll immediately be taken to this screen that you see in front of you. If you have previously completed the application and need to log back in, remember to go to dual ivtech.dualenroll.com, log in using your username and password. If you've forgotten that information, use the forgot your username or password link below to reset your account. But we're gonna head right back into Dual Enroll to register for classes. Initially, you'll see this pop-up message saying that you haven't registered for courses. If you're brand new to this, just dismiss that and you'll see this menu in the middle. So this will show you any courses that are available at your high school or a career center that you're attached to that are available to register. A couple things to help you find the right course. You can narrow courses down by term. So if I'm just looking at fall classes, I know I'm in a fall course. You can narrow it down by the fall term. Uh, full year might be available. Depending on the time of year, a spring term might be available as well. All active terms will just show you all the classes that are available currently. You can search by keyword here as well. Uh, you can also narrow it down by the type of class. So the key is up here. You can see the different types of classes that are available. High school classes have this nice little graduation cap next to them. So that tells you all of these are high school classes. But this one is a career center class. It's also offered in one of the high schools. So that can help you quickly toggle between your options if you're in a career center and just want to see those classes that will let you quickly see just the options available at the career center. So we're going to choose a few classes. We're in the fall term right now. I'm going to go ahead and choose a few of these classes. So when you click on the class itself, you're going to see the course number, a brief description, and then it'll also let you know if there are any prerequisites. So in this case, this course does not have a prerequisite. It'll give you a catalog description there as well. Scroll down and find your instructor. So you'll want to make sure that you're looking at the correct course section. Should have your instructor's name here. If you're taking that at your high school or the career center, that will be listed here. Once you find the class that you know you need to register for, click that request button, and that will allow you to request to be registered in that class. The next thing it's gonna do is just prompt this for you. If you're done registering, then you can log out or view your status. We're gonna go ahead and request another couple of classes to show you a few things. So still in the fall term, I'm gonna choose just a couple other classes. We've got a basic automotive class, no prerequisite there as well. I'm gonna register for my Penn High School instructors class. And then we'll do one more, let's see, it's in the fall term. We'll do an English class that I'm registering for. So I wanna take English 111. If there's more than one uh, instructor available for the class, you'll see more than one listed down here, but you should still only see courses that are available in your high school. So again, make sure you're narrowing it down, you're finding your instructor, you're registering for just that section. We're gonna request that English class as well. We're gonna do one more new to dual enroll this year. If you happen to register for a class that's in a different term, dual enroll is gonna prompt you to update some information each term. So we're gonna register for, this class is in spring of 2023. So I've chosen one that's in a different term. And when you do that, it's actually gonna take you back. It looks like it's going back to the application but it's gonna ask you just to update some of your key information. So in this case, we wanna make sure that your address and your contact information is up to date. So just review this page quickly, verify that information. If everything is still correct, just click update. If anything needs changed here, go ahead and change that information here and then click update. It's also gonna do the same with your parent contact information. So if this parent information is correct, just click update. If you need to add additional parent contact information, click the add button and it will let you put in some additional contact information for your parent. Once you update that, you're right back to the registration screen. So you can request another class. You can view your current status. We're going to request one more just to trial something. So we'll do advanced manufacturing 102 in this case as well. So once you are done selecting classes, you can click this View Current Status button, and it's going to show you the status of your courses. 
So depending on what course you selected, you could see various statuses in here for where the step is. You're also going to be able to access your course history. So if you click this, it will show you the steps that have been taken so far. You'll also be able to see any notifications. So on the notifications menu, that's going to let you see any notifications that might have gone out from Dual Enroll to you via email or text. If you flip over to our email inbox, you can see some of those messages have gone out now as well. These are just notifications that you've started the registration process. This is to the student. You have some that will be to your parent as well to let folks know what's going on as far as your dual enroll registrations. If you need to, at this point, come in, if you realize you registered for the wrong class, you have the option to abandon that class up until the time that it's registered. So if as a student, I came in and said, oh man, I registered for ADMF 102, I meant to register for 101. Or like this one, I registered in the fall semester, I should have registered in the spring. You can abandon the one that you did not want. So you can click that abandon button, just give us a brief explanation. Registered in the wrong section. Just a quick explanation is fine to let your counselor know why you're abandoning that registration. And then click that abandon button right there. And that will ensure that you are able to register or that you can um, end that registration before it takes any further action. So you can only do that up until the registration is processed. Once things have processed, you won't be able to abandon the registration. You'll have a few other options available. So in this case, it's letting me know that I've abandoned that registration now. It's not going to go any further. I don't need to proceed with that registration in any way. So I'm going to clear a couple of steps on the back side and just show you how some of these things function. You can see a couple of these are awaiting for my instructor's confirmation. So that's the next step it goes to. Typically, as your instructor is going to confirm that you do belong in that class. Occasionally, you may see the high school confirm student enrollment and course. That just means that it went to your counselor because your instructor doesn't have their my or their dual enroll account set up quite yet. As soon as they set that up, it should reroute that step for you. So you'll want to make sure that your instructor has confirmed you into the course. That step shouldn't linger too long because your dual credit instructor is going to be on top of things. They're going to make sure your registration's moving along on a regular basis. So you can come back in and refresh this page on occasion, and you'll see a few different steps arrive. I'm clearing some of these tasks on the backside, pretending like I'm your instructor, get things cleared out along the way, and then we'll look at what happens next. <clears throat> we do have one new step that I will show you in just a minute. If you are registering for a course that might be in a future term, we'll refresh our page and check out a few things. Occasionally, you may see some of these processing steps in there. That just means things are processing on the background. Don't worry about those. Those will come through. Eventually, they'll clear out after just a short period of time. If you see pending registration response, that's the same thing. It's just waiting for a response from our registration system. But here's our new step. So for registrations that are in a semester that hasn't opened quite yet. So in this case, I registered for a spring 2023 course. There's a new college hold for a submission step. That just means that Ivy Tech is holding on to your registration until we're able to register you into our spring term. Our spring term probably hasn't opened quite yet. So we're just hanging on to that because we can't do anything with it yet. But you don't need to do anything right now. If there's any other steps that you need to take, eventually you'll be able to take those steps down the road. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear some of these steps, pretending like I am our registration system. So we'll be able to see what that looks like next. So a couple of different responses that you might see in your account. And again, you'll be able to check the status in your account here, but you will also get emails for any of these steps. 
to the email that you put on file as well. So in this case, I know that my ADMF 101 course didn't have a prerequisite. I know that my Audi 100 course didn't have a prerequisite. So those are gonna flow through pretty smoothly. But my English course does have a prerequisite. It requires me to be college ready in English. So on occasion, you might see a step come back that looks something like this. There we go. Okay, so we can see our ADMF class is complete. My instructor confirmed me. I am registered in that class. So that means I'm done there. Also, my Automotive 100 class is complete. I'm fully registered in that class as well. If you come back over to your email account, you should have a notification saying, this is to let you know that you have been enrolled. This one's actually the parent guardian email to let your parent know that you have been enrolled in that class as well. So you'll see some of those notifications come through. But in English, we got an error message here that says, please see your advisor for assistance you do not appear to have met the prereq for the course. That means our system doesn't recognize that you have a prerequisite on file yet. So this step actually goes to your high school counselor first. Your high school counselor has a chance to enter any uh, testing scores you might have on file. Uh, they have a chance to let us know if there's something that they already have access to that ensures that you meet the prerequisite for the class. completing a step in the background here real quick. If your counselor recognizes that you do not yet meet the prerequisite for this class, they can send you a step that is gonna notify you that you need to complete the knowledge assessment for us. So in the background, I just pretended like I was your high school counselor and I sent this step your way. Now you can see this step is highlighted in yellow. Anything in yellow means that you need to take action on that step. So this is now called the Student Complete Knowledge Assessment, and it's in yellow because we need you to do something. So click on that step. It's going to let you know your registration request was declined because you haven't met the prereq. This language is a little bit updated these days, so it's not going to say declined. It's going to let you know uh, the prerequisite that you need to complete. So your counselor might have added a message like this. Please complete the English Knowledge Assessment. There is a link to our YouTube channel here. This is the video guide showing you how to set up your MyIV account and access the knowledge assessment. So that is found right here on the YouTube channel you're on, but there's a link right in that course as well. So what you need to do is make sure you access your MyIV account and find the knowledge assessment. You're going to want to complete that. Once you have the required score, it's going to tell you, congratulations, you're ready to register for your English class. You can come right back into dual enroll and just click complete step. So as soon as you click complete step, that is gonna send your registration back to our system. It's gonna check and make sure that you do indeed meet that knowledge assessment criteria, that you finish things fully, and it's gonna send it back through our registration system to register you. If you did complete the knowledge assessment, you should be all set. If you took the knowledge assessment, but you didn't get the score you needed, you are able to work on the study pathways and raise that score until you get to the point where you meet that criteria. So if you click that complete step before you've gotten to the required score, it's just gonna send this right back to your high school counselor to evaluate again, and she'll probably send it right back to you to complete that knowledge assessment step. But assuming that you've been able to complete the knowledge assessment successfully, once you send that step back through, we'll refresh things now, you can see the English course is now complete it is ready to go. So it's as simple as that. So during your registration period, you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on your knowledge assessment and your email, or on your dual enroll account, sorry, and your email to make sure if your counselor has sent you a step asking you to complete the knowledge assessment, you wanna make sure that you have had a chance to do that so that you can get registered. There is a deadline each semester to complete the knowledge assessment. So make sure you are working on that deadline. You can see now that I no longer have the option to abandon courses. 
because my registration is complete, I'd have the option now to drop this course if I need to. So if within the drop window, you'll have a couple of weeks after registration closes to drop a class. If you realize you were in the wrong class, or maybe you just need to change your schedule, uh, you can come in. If you're no longer taking that class, you can request to drop that class and dual enroll. It's going to ask you, do you really want to drop that? It's just going to make sure. Go ahead and confirm that if that's the case. After the drop window has passed, you do still have an option to withdraw from the class up until the last day for the withdraw period. That is typically about three quarters of the way through the class. You'll have a chance to withdraw from the class. Now you can see this has changed to dropping. That is going to go to your high school instructor in the class to verify that you want to drop that class as well. Once they verify that you're dropping the class, that will process and you'll get a message here that simply says dropped. So that is a walkthrough for how to complete registrations in dualenroll.com. It's important to keep an eye on this page. Your status menu shows you all your steps to make sure that you have finished all your registrations each semester and that you know exactly what classes you are enrolled in.